thank you for your amazing generosity throughout this whole pandemic period. We have, as a social action team, been able to reach out into our local community, providing over 60,000 food parcels and hot meals. Helping hands reaching out into an often hurting world is one of our mission statements. And that needs to be shown during this next period. As Christmas rolls in and the world stutters and hurts, we've been called to thrive, not just survive. And part of that is being able to sow into other people's lives, showing them the love of Jesus. Can you help us reach our community during this next period? Faith in your faith that sustains you through storms and through the space between and seasons of doubt and seasons of failure and seasons of fear. It's not faith in your faith. If that was the case, we'd all be done for. Now watch this. The Bible talks about having faith in His grace. Because when your faith fails, grace reaches out. It doesn't matter what your background or your history, what your parents look like, or what you've been like as a parent, Jesus can step in, make a way, make a difference, restore with his love, and bring restoration to you, your family, in this season. God bless you. Thanks for being on this Advent journey with us, and we'll look forward to seeing you next time as part of this Advent. Thank you for your amazing generosity throughout this whole pandemic period. We have, as a social action team, been able to reach out into our local community, providing over 60,000 food parcels and hot meals. Helping hands reaching out into an often hurting world is one of our mission statements. And that needs to be shown during this next period. As Christmas rolls in and the world stutters and hurts, we've been called to thrive, not just survive. And part of that is being able to sow into other people's lives, showing them the love of Jesus. Can you help us reach our community during this next period?
faith in your faith that sustains you through storms and through the space between and seasons of doubt as seasons of failure and seasons of fear it's not faith in your faith if that was the case we'd all be done for now watch this the Bible talks about having faith in his grace because when your faith fails grace reaches out It doesn't matter what your background or your history, what your parents look like, or what you've been like as a parent, Jesus can step in, make a way, make a difference, restore with his love, and bring restoration to you, your family, in this season. God bless you. Thanks for being on this Advent journey with us, and we'll look forward to seeing you next time as part of this Advent. Thank you for your amazing generosity throughout this whole pandemic period. We have, as a social action team, been able to reach out into our local community, providing over 60,000 food parcels and hot meals. Helping hands reaching out into an often hurting world is one of our mission statements. And that needs to be shown during this next period. As Christmas rolls in and the world stutters and hurts, we've been called to thrive, not just survive. And part of that is being able to sow into other people's lives, showing them the love of Jesus. Can you help us reach our community during this next period? faith in your faith that sustains you through storms and through the space between and seasons of doubt as seasons of failure and seasons of fear it's not faith in your faith if that was the case we'd all be done for now watch this the Bible talks about having faith in his grace because when your faith fails grace reaches out
It doesn't matter what your background or your history, what your parents look like, or what you've been like as a parent, Jesus can step in, make a way, make a difference, restore with his love, and bring restoration to you, your family, in this season. God bless you. Thanks for being on this Advent journey with us, and we'll look forward to seeing you next time as part of this Advent. It doesn't matter what your background or your history, what your parents look like, or what you've been like as a parent, Jesus can step in, make a way, make a difference, restore with his love, and bring restoration to you, your family, in this season. God bless you. Thanks for being on this Advent journey with us, and we'll look forward to seeing you next time as part of this Advent. faith in your faith that sustains you through storms and through the space between and seasons of doubt as seasons of failure and seasons of fear it's not faith in your faith if that was the case we'd all be done for now watch this the Bible talks about having faith in his grace because when your faith fails grace reaches out Welcome to Church Online. We are really glad that you've joined us today. There are a team of pastors who are here to connect with you, pray with you and engage with you. So please don't go away without getting that prayer that you need. But before that, let's get ready to worship Jesus together. Hi everyone, welcome to Destiny Church Online. It's so great to see you. Come and join us, come on. Spirit of God, take me to the
We thank you that you love us and you have a good plan for our lives. We pray your blessing over today's service and over every single person who is connecting with you and us today. We pray this in Jesus' name. Well, thank you for joining us at Church Online. It's really great to be with you today. We are in for a great time with God and one another. But next up, we have a special message from Executive Pastor Dan Owen on giving. Hey church, Christmas is almost upon us. In fact, this week, the first time I woke up to find frost and ice and snow on the floor, it is almost here. You know, Christmas is a season for generosity. I love getting presents, but do you know, I actually really love and are blessed even more when I get to give them. I love the smile on people's faces and the impact it has in their lives when I can show love to them through that. And you know, this is an opportunity for us to do this just now. Right now is an opportunity to give. And you know, we firstly give to God. We bring in our tithes, the first tenth of all our increase, and we give over and above our offerings out of the generosity, out of the gratitude that is in our heart for everything that he is and everything that he has done. And I wanna encourage you in this season, continue to do that. But also we have another opportunity to be generous. In this last week, it's been incredible. We've had nine and a half thousand boxes leave one of our buildings as we partnered with Samaritan's Purse and the Operation Christmas Child Project. Uh, and those boxes, those shoes boxes, many of them which you filled out yourselves and many of them have come in from other churches around, the, around Scotland. They are heading their, uh, right now out to Albania to bless families uh, out there, families who would otherwise not receive anything. But right now we are having a local Christmas hamper appeal, uh, one that is gonna be impacting the people that we've been looking after in this country. And so I'm gonna encourage you and ask for you uh, to get involved again, church. You have already done so well, and this year you've already shown so much generosity, but it really is better to give than to get. So I'm encouraging you and asking you, will you be generous again with us just now? Uh, in this moment, as I said, it's our moment to bring our tithes, to give over and above, but also why not sign up to, to sponsoring one of the hampers that are going on? Our heart this Christmas is to be able to bless over 500 families with these hampers, filled with goodies and toys and food. And you know, really, these, these families are gonna be waking up on Christmas morning with absolutely nothing in their fridges and nothing in their cupboards. But this is an opportunity for us to show the love of Christ with them. And not only is, are we gonna be providing a practical help uh, to these folks, but we're also gonna be sharing the gospel, the love of Christ with them as we do so. Who knows the difference that that hamper will make at this Christmas season?
Uh, there's going to be a link for you to follow just now uh, for some more information and for your opportunity to give. But here's another method as well. Why not, alongside giving into that hamper pool, you can give uh, without actually doing anything else other than signing up to this service. Who's ever bought anything off of Amazon? If you're like me, you've probably been living on Amazon this last year with all the shops shut down and closed. Well, Amazon have a charitable side to them, believe it or not, and it's called smile.amazon. And if you go on to smile.amazon.co.uk, you can partner with a charity, Destiny Church Trust is listed there, and that means that everything that you purchase online, a donation, a, a percentage of that comes to us. And we're asking for you to do that as well. I know that you're going to be buying stuff online. And if you use that service, why not sign up to it? It's absolutely free. It's hassle free. You just need to remember to go to smile.amazon every time you want to purchase something this Christmas season and choose Destiny Church Trust as your charity of choice. But as you do that, as you give and as you even just purchase and buy things on, online and, uh, and are blessing people with gifts, you'll be giving something additional. You'll be giving hope and a real practical blessing to many families around this place as well. Let's give generously in this season. Let's just pray over our giving. Father, I want to thank you for the opportunity we have in this Christmas season to be generous. Thank you, God, that you've called us to be generous people, active participants in your kingdom's advance. Lord, I pray for every person that has sown today, that has brought in their tithes, that have given over and above and that have signed up to the hamper people. Lord, bless them. I pray for a return back into their lives just as your word says you will do so. But Lord, even more importantly than that, I pray that there will be a return into your kingdom of souls one to you as the gospel is proclaimed, as lives are, are impacted and transformed by the love of Christ shown through these hampers and through the, the gospel message this Christmas. Lord, I pray that many will come to know you. Thank you, God, for this opportunity to be generous. We bless you. Amen. Well, folks, I don't know about you, but I have been so encouraged by the praise reports and testimonies this past season of what God has been doing as he's been actively involved in the lives of so many. And right now is our opportunity to hear another fantastic story. Let's tune in to God's biography. 
Hi Destiny, my name is Godfrey and I'm from Nirongwe, Malawi and I'm a Christian. Let me tell you what the Lord has done in my life. So last year, um, I moved for, for the first time to Glasgow to study. And before I moved, God gave me a weight from the book of Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 10. And in that weight, God said, you know what, I'm going to take you to a country. And when you go there, you are going to stay in mansions that you did not build. You are going to eat food that you did not provide. And you drink from wells that you did not dig. And honestly, that made me so, so very happy. I knew God is faithful and that's, ex that's, that's exactly what will happen. So I was so confident to come here. And when I came, everything was really great until the beginning of the lockdown. At that point, I, I had to extend my accommodation contract and I realized it was hard to do that because of the lockdown. So I emailed the university to ask for the possibility of doing that. And unfortunately, when the university got back to me, they said it was almost impossible to extend the contract. I think that was the point in my life when I was very, very scared because I didn't know my way around Glasgow. I didn't know how to go about looking for flats. And again, it was impossible for me to go back home. So I was really, really scared. But then I remembered I have a church family, so I went to the Destiny family and I explained the issue. And most of them were so happy to stand with me in prayer. And they reminded me of the faithfulness of God and that actually remind, that made me remember actually the promise that God gave me. So we stood together in prayer, we prayed about it, and I saw God came through because after we prayed, I received another email from the university saying that they were pleased to extend my contract. And not only that, the, cha um, the, the accommodation um, services actually also said that they were so happy to give me free accommodation. So they gave me five months worthy of free accommodation. That was a breakthrough, really. I was so, so, so very happy. And as though not enough, God has been so gracious to me. Recently, I've been awarded with uh, the Morgan Stanley Prize for Outstanding Students from my university. And I look at myself, I'm like, wow, look at a boy from Malawi staying here in Glasgow and all the promises of God are coming through. Indeed, the Lord has been so very good to me. Welcome to our afternoon evening service here at Destiny Church Online. We have now started bringing a message also into these meetings because we think we should always feast on the Word of God. And today I'm delighted to welcome a very special friend of this house, Pastor Ray Bevan, to come and bring the Word with us. Ray has become known around the earth for particularly teaching on Grace. He's been in ministry for many, many years, been leading great churches and been an influential spiritual leader in our nation. I know that when we hear Ray, we're always encouraged. We find that sense of humor helping us along the journey of life. And I know that you are going to be blessed as he brings the word of God to you this afternoon. So get your Bibles ready, get your notebooks ready or your phone ready. Listen good, listen well. Here's Ray Bevan. Well, hi, everybody. Uh, it's great to be with you today, and uh, it's a privilege for me to be part of the journey that you are on right now as a church. And I want to talk to you today about God's ingredient for longevity, God's ingredient for us to finish strong, God's ingredient to give us the endurance to finish our race. And for me, the key to longevity is knowing how to negotiate what I call the space between. Let that phrase sink into your heart, the space between. The space between the promise given and the fulfillment of that promise. Huh. Uh, uh, in Genesis chapter 3, God promises the world that a Savior would come to save us from our sins. In Galatians, it says that in the fullness of time, 
that promise came to pass. So the space between the promise given and the fullness of time of that promise was 2,000 years. <laughs> and uh, whatever God gives us a promise, whenever he comes to us personally or as a church and gives us a promise, there is a fullness of time to that promise. And the key to endure the space between, because I don't know, some of you right now are wondering, when is God going to fulfill that promise he gave to me? And you are, you are enduring the space between, and God's secret ingredient for us to endure the space between the promise given and the promise fulfilled is hope. <laughs> the power of hope. The space between the promise given to Abraham that he was going to have a child regarding the birth of Isaac and the fulfillment of that promise was 25 years. Well, how did Abraham endure that space between? And the Bible says in the book of Romans, watch this, this is so powerful, that Abraham, who against hope, believed in hope. It sounds like a contradiction, doesn't it? But what does that actually mean? Well, it's very simple. Uh, when Abraham looked at his wife and looked at himself, he was like well into his 90s. And so everything in the natural to produce a child was totally impossible. So when God gave him the promise, it looked like a hopeless situation. But in the middle of the hopelessness, there was a divine energy called hope that helped him to hope against the hopeless, if you understand what I'm saying. Because hope will keep your faith alive until the promise is fulfilled. Faith, the Bible says, is the substance of things hoped for. So hope, this wonderful ingredient, this, when the Bible talks about hope, it talks about um, a positive expectation that good will come. Man. And there is one aspect of faith that we must apply if we are going to endure the space between and the fulfillment of that promise. And um, I've, I've not heard anybody speak about this before. It's a revelation that God gave me. And it's an aspect of faith which is connected to hope, and I'll explain that in a moment. It's, a, it's an aspect of faith which I call nocturnal faith. The faith that rests. Nocturnal faith. The faith that rests. When I studied uh, faith uh, in, in all its aspects, I've come to the conclusion that for me, it seems to be there are five aspects to faith. First of all, we have what I call audio faith, the faith that hears. Faith comes by hearing. Then we have optical faith, the faith that sees. Um, faith, uh, the substance of things hoped for or the substance of things that is seen. Then we have cardio faith. Uh, this is the faith that believes. The Bible says if you believe in your heart, uh, and which leads us on to the fourth aspect of faith, which is vocal faith, and that's the faith that speaks. I believe, therefore I speak. But there's a fifth element of faith that's connected to hope, and it's, it's absolutely vital we understand and practice this element of faith and it's nocturnal faith, the faith that rests. Now, let, let, me just, let me just take a little bit of a side salad here because there's so much um, guilt and condemnation 
connected with with some aspect of preaching faith. In other words, well, the reason why you are sick is because you haven't got enough faith or your faith is too small. You've got to maintain a level of faith in order to succeed. And I think that's caused so many people to live in condemnation and, and it's caused so many people to have faith in their faith. And we all know very often our faith fails. Very often we think, you know, we try to psych up some uh, emotional disposition and we think, well, that's staying in faith. Well, no, I, I want to I just help somebody here. It's not faith in your faith that sustains you through storms and through the space between and seasons of doubt as seasons of failure and seasons of fear. It's not faith in your faith. If that was the case, we'd all be done for. Now watch this. The Bible talks about having faith in his grace. Because when your faith fails, grace reaches out. <laughs> Remember when Peter stepped out of the boat? He was full of faith. Nobody else walked on water. The word came to him. Come on, Peter. He stepped out on the water. His faith was strong. He was walking. And then we know he looked at the waves and he thought, what am I doing here? Just like some of you, you stepped out in faith, believing God for something. And then you're out in the middle of it and you're having a bit of a wobbly and you're thinking, what's going on? Why did I do this? Am I crazy? And Peter began to sink. We know the story. But I love this. The moment that faith, Peter's faith began to fail, watch this, grace reached out and lifted him up. So don't beat yourself up because you think it is your fault that things haven't worked out. You should have had more faith. No, when your faith fails, you know, the Bible says that immediately when he saw Peter sinking, he was there. So it's faith in his grace. He will never let you down. And it's, and it's all connected to nocturnal faith, the faith that rests. Ha. Huh. It's an aspect of faith where you rest while faith works. And a wonderful picture in the Old Testament of this is David, Saul, and Goliath. We know the story in 1 Samuel 17. Uh, Goliath was not David's giant. It was Saul's. It was Saul's giant, basically. David turns up. And if you read 1 Samuel 17 and replace, every time you see David's name, replace it with faith, um, and, and you'll discover how faith, nocturnal faith, actually works. For, for instance, David turns up, Saul is in his tent, the giant is out there threatening the army and him and his kingship, and he's in the tent, he doesn't know what to do. And so here's little David, and this is what he says to Saul. He says, Saul, King Saul, your servant will fight for you. It was Saul's giant, but, but, David, but David said, you rest in your tent, and I'll go and fight this giant for you. Man, when I read that, how do you know? See, faith is your servant. Faith wants to work for you while you rest. Faith wants to work for you while, uh, wants to work for you while you rest in the space between waiting for the promise to be fulfilled. How do you know that someone has really got hold of a promise from God? Well, yes, yeah, very simple. They're asleep. They're resting. Faith doesn't pace the floor at 3 a.m. in the morning thinking, how am I going to get through this? No. Faith sits in a deck chair by the ocean of God's faithfulness and just rests. Someone said, faith is very tanned indeed. 
And for me, the first activity that accompanies the possession of a promise, listen to me carefully, the first activity that accompanies the possession of a promise is the ceasing of activity. Nocturnal faith is a noun. It's not a verb. Nocturnal faith is not an action. It's a place. Nocturnal faith is not a state of doing. It's a state of having. Man, I hope this is... Um, I hope this is making sense. I hope this is helping someone right now. I, I, because, because God is continually getting us to lie down in green pastures. We want to get up and do something and make it happen. God says, no, you have to. This is, this is how hope works. It incorporates nocturnal faith. He makes us to lie down in green pastures and he leads us beside still waters. Nocturnal faith is the place, green pastures and still waters is the place where faith takes you to rest. And I'm going to show you something from the scripture. I'm going to read Matthew chapter 4, verse 26 to 29. And Jesus says, Jesus says, I'm going to show you how this works. Okay, stay with me um, because this will really bless you. Mark chapter 4, verse 26 to 29. And he said, Jesus said, the kingdom of God is as if. In other words, what I'm about to tell you is... I, what I'm about to show you is how the kingdom of God works. It's as if. It's just like I'm going to explain to you. It's as if a man should scatter seed on the ground and should sleep by night and rise by day and the seed should sprout and grow and the farmer himself doesn't know how that works. For the earth yields crops by itself, first the blade, then the head, and after that, the full grain in the head. But when the grain ripens, he immediately puts in the sickle because the harvest is come. And when I read these verses here, Jesus is explaining the procedure of how hope and nocturnal faith work together. This is, he says, it's as if this, I'm showing you a principle in the kingdom of God on how it operates. First of all, he says this, the farmer who scatters the seed on the ground. We are the farmer. The word of God is the seed and we speak it out. God gives you a promise. We, we agree with it and we speak it out. The seed is sown. Watch this. We hear the audio. We see, wow, this is what God is going to do for me. We believe, cardio. We speak it, vocal. Then, and this is an area of faith that many people do not enter into, we rest. That's nocturnal faith. But, and also, and these, these words of Jesus explains to us what we actually rest from. First of all, when you're operating in nocturnal faith and living in the biblical meaning of hope, you rest from worrying. It says the farmer, once the seed is in the ground, watch this, sleeps by night. <laughs> He's not up worrying by night. He sleeps by night. The seed is in the ground. I, I, it's, it's there. I know it's coming. There's nothing more that I can do. And the Apostle Paul, what did that, that wonderful statement? I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So nocturnal faith helps you to rest from worrying. The second thing you rest from is from working. The, 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 Jesus says the farmer will rise by day, not work by day. He'll just get up in the morning. He doesn't go back out into the field and dig up the soil to see if it's working. 
He doesn't command the soil to work. No, Jesus says the seed will sprout and grow for the earth does the work itself. Doesn't need any help from you. So when you've sown your words of faith into the soil of God's will for your life, it will produce without any help from us. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's fantastic. Okay, the third thing you rest from is, according to the scriptures, is reasoning. The farmer says, the, uh, the fa Jesus says, the farmer doesn't know how this works. Please stop trying to figure out how God is going to answer your prayer. Stop trying to figure out how, how God is going to bring that promise he's given to you to pass. Stop trying to figure out how God's going to do it. When Lazarus died, Martha and Mary were so disappointed because they imagined Jesus would come and heal Lazarus. Lazarus. But he died. Now all hope had gone. What's this? And when Jesus turns up, we know the story. He raised Lazarus from the dead. And this is the reason why. It's because here's another lesson. Very often, God doesn't meet our expectations because he wants to exceed them. And very often, we imagine exactly how God's going to bring the promise to pass. But God says, no, no. There may be a space between for Mary and Martha. It was four long days. Uh, and, 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 and Jesus comes to us and says, hey, listen, you can imagine all you want. But my desire is for me to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all you could ask or imagine. And when God fulfills his promise to you, I'm telling you, it'll be far greater than what you even imagined. We need to rest, fourthly, from impatience. Impatience. Jesus said, first the blade, then the heads of the grain, then finally the grain. There's a process here. First the blade, then the heads, and finally. And from the time that you sow until the time you receive, there is a first, there is a then, and there is a finally. And there's always a fullness of time for every promise. And uh, so Jesus taught them, but then he did something else. First of all, Jesus taught them the principle of nocturnal faith connected to hope. Then he demonstrated it. <laughs> it's fantastic. Mark chapter 4, last scripture. Mark chapter 4, verse 35 to 41. Uh, and as Jesus, as evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, um, uh, let's, let's go to the other side. So they took the boat. And we, look, I haven't got time to read the whole scripture. Read it yourself. Uh, but we know the story. So Jesus said on the same day that he taught them this principle, he said, we are now going to the other side. And you know the story. A massive storm came. And the Bible says that Jesus was asleep in the boat. He was asleep in the boat while the storm was raging. The disciples were panicking. But you see, watch this. Jesus was demonstrating what he just taught them. He said, we are going to the other side. The seed was in the ground. The promise was given. But between the seed sown and the harvest realized the other side, there was a storm. And we are right now, the church is in the middle of a storm right now, this COVID storm, a threatening the, 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 the reliability of the promise that God has given to us. And you may be in a personal storm right now, but what is going on? God promised me this. No, he's teaching you how to operate in nocturnal faith. And in verse 37 and 38, it says, but soon a fierce storm came up. High waves were breaking into the boat and began to fill with water. I love this. Look, but Jesus was sleeping at the back of the boat with his head on a cushion and the disciples woke him up. They forgot all the teaching about nocturnal faith. Teacher, don't you care that we're going to drown? How many times have we been there and you may be there right now? 
But Jesus, through this message, is coming uh, to encourage you uh, to, to take his example. He was surrounded by panic. The storm was threatening the reliability of the seed sown. His clothes were already soaking wet. The ship was sinking. The advisors around him said, you're going down. But Jesus, his faith said, sleep. That is nocturnal faith right there. Sleep, rest. And I know right now the world is in a a total panic with what's going on. And maybe as a church and maybe as individuals, you're wondering, well, God gave us promises. We've had words from God. Uh, what's going to happen? And the boat may be filling up with water and you may be worrying and reasoning. No, no. Meditate on the words I've read to you from Mark chapter 4 and understand when you operate in nocturnal faith, you can rest. You can sleep. It's called the power of hope. And I just pray that this word has really helped you um, to understand how to negotiate the space between the promise and the fulfillment of that promise, whether it's corporate or personal. But you know, there's one promise you do not have to negotiate the space between. It's this. If you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you will be saved. And there are people watching me right now, and you may be thinking, I'd love to live like that, Ray. I'd love to know how to l operate and live in this nocturnal faith where I can just trust God. Well, it starts by simply giving your life to Jesus. Why don't you pray with me right now? If you're listening to my voice right now and you, and, and, and man, you're worrying, you're reasoning, you're impatient, you're frustrated, you don't know what's happening. No, let Jesus bring peace to your soul. And it begins by believing in him for salvation. I know it's hard to believe, but all your sins have been forgiven. And all Jesus is asking you to do, believe me. When I died on the cross, I took your sins. I've forgiven. You are forgiven. All you have to do is to believe. Will you believe with me right now? Will you invite Jesus into your life? Will you say, Jesus, I, I believe. I, I, I can't understand it, but I believe that you died for my sins 2,000 years ago. And you know what, Jesus? I'm going to believe that right now. I'm going to believe that I am forgiven. I receive forgiveness for all my sins. Please come into my life and teach me how to walk by faith, especially how to operate in nocturnal faith. Help me to understand this secret ingredient to longevity called hope. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Well, that's wonderful. I, I, I'm just believing that many prayed that prayer with me and started a life of adventure and excitement and peace and joy um, serving Jesus. I also want to encourage those of you that are in the space between, and it's been a long time, maybe two or three years or even longer, waiting for God to come through for you. This is, I believe this principle of nocturnal faith is so important for us to endure that space between. And some of us, like Abraham, you know, it, it, we think, wow, this is taking too long here. And as we know, he tried to manipulate the promise of God through his flesh, through his own reasoning. And he ended up with uh, Ishmael, uh, which caused him, uh, you know, lots of problems. 
And, and very often, you know, sometimes we suffer the consequences of our decisions. But at the end of the day, you know, we are just human. And some of you may have tried to manipulate God's promise and it hasn't worked out. Listen, God is still on track to fulfill that promise to you. And some of you are going through this COVID virus and you, you, some of you may have lost your job. Some of you are thinking, well, I thought the promise was connected to that. No, God has his own way of working it out. And, uh, and sometimes even when it, it looks like our world is upside down, even though it looks like, like Joseph in the Old Testament, the promise is going in reverse. It looked like, you know, for Joseph, the space between was 12 years. But it was 12 years of seeming reversal. <laughs> but then God in a moment turns it all around. Uh, I think it's amazing. I think it's, up. I mean, for David, after he kills Goliath, he goes back and he just serves his father tending the sheep. The anointing oil, he could still taste it in his mouth. Uh, 12, 14 years later in a cave, when he's thinking, my life is over. Saul is trying to kill me. Again, it looked like his destiny was going in reverse. But God had a plan. During that space between, um, and with all the experiences he went through, God was perfecting his character, teaching him how to trust, teaching him how to be patient. And so my prayer for you, for those of you, in the space between the promise and the fullness of time, trust me, operate in these principles that I've shared with you today, and, uh, and your harvest is coming. Don't give up. Be strong. And the church, for the church there, th your best days are ahead of you. That's why I believe God has arranged for your pastor to ask me to come to share this message with you because I believe it's prophetic for where you are right now. So, Father, bless every single person that's, that's, that's believing you for a fulfillment of a personal promise whether it's financial, relational, ecclesiastical, ministry-wise, I don't care what it is, Father, right now, help them to tap in to hope. Against hope, believing in hope. Help them to practice nocturnal faith, rest from worrying, rest from reasoning, rest from impatience, Father, I commit them now into your hands in Jesus' name. God bless you, everybody. It's been a joy. To wrap up today, let's break bread together. Jesus said that we should do this often. That means as many times as we like. It's actually a divine opportunity, a privileged invitation. Every time we do this, we are remembering that Jesus is the head of the church. He is the Lord of our lives and he has made a covenant with us that he will never break. It means that he's promised to provide, he's promised to forgive, he's promised to heal and he's promised to cover. That guarantees that we will thrive, not survive in this season, right? So let's break bread together. The Bible teaches us that we should take the bread and when we do so, we remember the Lord's body that was broken for us. So pray, please. Father, I thank you for this emblem that reminds us that your son was broken, broken on purpose so that we could be healthy, strong. He was broken in the sense also that he lost his relationship with you and he had to be uh, forgotten by you for a few moments so that we will never be forgotten by you. I thank you for this bread that just represents the broken body, the broken life of Jesus Christ. We receive wholeness right now. Amen. Amen. In the same way, the Bible tells us Jesus took the wine, the cup, and he told us that this was the cup of the new covenant. But the old one is finished. Hebrews says it was obsolete. It wasn't good enough. It had laws and rituals and regulations, none of which we could complete or comply with. But Jesus 
fulfilled every last thing. He became our law keeper. He became the one who walked in obedience. He became our sin on the cross and he's become our righteousness. All of those things have been added to us. And when we look at this cup, we remember that. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus, for your blood. Thank you, Father, that you sent him. Thank you for our church family and our body around the earth. We thank you that wherever we are, we are one together and we receive from you your grace, your life and your blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, I'm mindful as we come back into the buildings and as we reach together to see answers, we really do need to value our relationships and value one another. And I'm hearing that the meeting times or the meeting places, the events feel very different, but we've to still look beyond the surroundings, the setup, even the kind of strategy that's uh, approached on any occasion and reach across to the people because you and I come together when we break bread as well as, as we reach up to the Lord. And we must value these relationship moments and really look out for one another in a brand new and very awake kind of way. Let's not race past because the meeting's different. Let's linger just to meet face to face and heart to heart. It's very, very important. So make sure you connect with somebody today, right? If you're in a friendship cafe, make sure you say hi. Maybe if you're on your own at home, why don't you pick up the phone or Facebook somebody and connect with each other. But you know, maybe that you are watching today or you're with us today in some place and you don't know Jesus yet, you know? The Bible makes the biggest invitation of all that we can come to know God, that he can live in our hearts. 2,000 years ago, Jesus died on a cross to take away our sins so he becomes our savior. Isn't that a beautiful thought? But when we enter into a relationship with him, he becomes our Lord. We put him in charge of our lives, past, present, and future. And when Jesus is Lord, he takes that responsibility seriously. Maybe today, you need to give your life to God. Let him be the Lord of your life. You've tried running it yourself, and some of us have run it into the ground. Why don't you let God run your life? Take control of it. Live with him, live for him. Let him live through you. And if that is you, I wanna pray for you. We're gonna to pray together. Whatever you are, if you need Jesus today, pray this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, I thank you that you love me. You want a relationship with me. You want to save me and you want to lead me. Thank you that this is only possible through that which Jesus did for me. I'm receiving him today and accepting all that he has done. I want to make Jesus the Lord of my life. I thank you that when I pray like this, you hear me. Amen. Wow, if you prayed that prayer, it's the best thing you ever did, but it's the beginning, not the end, the beginning of a journey. We would like to help you on that journey and so would many other pastors. So if you're watching with us today on Church Online, you'll see a tab which says, request prayer. I'd like you to press that tab right now. Go and press that tab right now and pastors who are with us online will immediately connect with you. If you're on Facebook or YouTube, go on the chat, there's a link, press that link and they will immediately connect with you. Even if you didn't pray the prayer, but you've got some questions or some other things you'd like to discuss, they're there for you. Further, I'd like to send you this booklet. And once you press those links, we'll make sure it's on its way to you. Then of course, God also fill you with his Holy Spirit, right? Fill you with power. The pastors will pray for you if that's what you need today also. Listen, if you've got that prayer request, send it in to the address on the screen. We'll be delighted to pray with you. And if you've got a question or a comment or something that you'd like to share with Sue and myself, we'd love to hear from you as well. But until next time, this is Andrew and Sue. Oh, and Destiny Church Online. Take care. God bless. God bless.
believe that you were as blessed by that word as I was. That was a word from God. But please don't go away. There's a whole team of people here who want to connect with you, speak with you and pray for you. So please engage with the chat and let us know who you are, where you're connecting from and what we can pray for. And don't forget to come back next week for next Sunday service. I'll see you then. God bless and goodbye. faith in your faith that sustains you through storms and through the space between and seasons of doubt as seasons of failure and seasons of fear it's not faith in your faith if that was the case we'd all be done for now watch this the Bible talks about having faith in his grace because when your faith fails grace reaches out
It doesn't matter what your background or your history, what your parents look like, or what you've been like as a parent, Jesus can step in, make a way, make a difference, restore with his love, and bring restoration to you, your family, in this season. God bless you. Thanks for being on this Advent journey with us, and we'll look forward to seeing you next time as part of this Advent. Thank you for your amazing generosity throughout this whole pandemic period. We have, as a social action team, been able to reach out into our local community, providing over 60,000 food parcels and hot meals. Helping hands reaching out into an often hurting world is one of our mission statements. And that needs to be shown during this next period. As Christmas rolls in and the world stutters and hurts, we've been called to thrive, not just survive. And part of that is being able to sow into other people's lives, showing them the love of Jesus. Can you help us reach our community during this next period? faith in your faith that sustains you through storms and through the space between and seasons of doubt as seasons of failure and seasons of fear it's not faith in your faith if that was the case we'd all be done for now watch this the Bible talks about having faith in his grace because when your faith fails grace reaches out It doesn't matter what your background or your history, what your parents look like, or what you've been like as a parent, Jesus can step in, make a way, make a difference, restore with his love, and bring restoration to you, your family, in this season. God bless you. Thanks for being on this Advent journey with us, and we'll look forward to seeing you next time as part of this Advent. Thank you for your amazing generosity throughout this whole pandemic period. We have, as a social action team, been able to reach out into our local community, providing over 60,000 food parcels and hot meals. 
helping hands reaching out into an often hurting world is one of our mission statements. And that needs to be shown during this next period. As Christmas rolls in and the world stutters and hurts, we've been called to thrive, not just survive. And part of that is being able to sow into other people's lives, showing them the love of Jesus. Can you help us reach our community during this next period? faith in your faith that sustains you through storms and through the space between and seasons of doubt and seasons of failure and seasons of fear it's not faith in your faith if that was the case we'd all be done for now watch this the Bible talks about having faith in his grace because when your faith fails grace reaches out It doesn't matter what your background or your history, what your parents look like, or what you've been like as a parent, Jesus can step in, make a way, make a difference, restore with his love, and bring restoration to you, your family, in this season. God bless you. Thanks for being on this Advent journey with us, and we'll look forward to seeing you next time as part of this Advent. Thank you for your amazing generosity throughout this whole pandemic period. We have, as a social action team, been able to reach out into our local community, providing over 60,000 food parcels and hot meals. Helping hands reaching out into an often hurting world is one of our mission statements. And that needs to be shown during this next period. As Christmas rolls in and the world stutters and hurts, we've been called to thrive, not just survive. And part of that is being able to sow into other people's lives, showing them the love of Jesus. Can you help us reach our community during this next period? Mm -hmm.